I know there's a lot of bad news in the world right now, but the good news is the Arby's is still open. That's not good news. Taylor Jackson shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. So as I'm sure you're experiencing, it is a bit of a hard time right now in the wedding photography industry. I'm here today to talk to you about something that's actually positive and specifically positive and maybe the most once in a lifetime moment if you're just trying to get into wedding photography right now or if you really wanna up your weddings from something like maybe one or two or three or five weddings a year to something like 40, 50, 60, 80, 120. Ryan Breineiser is the only guy that I know that shoots like 120 weddings a year. So he shoots in New York City and he can shoot weddings Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I say to that, Ryan Breineiser, you're a wild and crazy human being. Some pretty exciting news actually that Arby's is still open. Nobody's excited about that. Except I guess there's, there's like five cars in line for the drive-thru. brought Arby's. Nick, do you want some Arby's? <sighs> He's a great camper. You're doing a great job, Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know, it's a bit weird. I can't turn because my wheel is my tripod. You know what, let's not drive anywhere today. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just talk. Turn the car off. Just, 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 you know, my steering wheel moves when you turn the ignition off, I guess. If you are a wedding photographer right now, it might seem like the absolute worst season of all seasons in the history of wedding photography. And quite honestly, you're probably right. 2008 was not nearly this bad. 2008 and I guess 9-11, if you were a wedding photographer way back then, and that still would have been in the film days, which is a whole level of stress that I would never want to submit myself to. 2008, well, there were a lot of people that were unable to have the weddings that they wanted. I was building my business in 2008 and I, just, it was, it was kind of fine. I had no real problems. I guess I also didn't really know any better. So maybe, I don't, I don't know if that's officially advice. Anyways, this time is a heck of a lot different because events are physically unable to happen. It's not just the few affected that are not able to have the weddings that they wanted and to hire the wedding photographers that they wanted, but it is essentially that all events everywhere in the world are canceled. And I was having a conversation with Marshall last night and he is in the rental, I guess, the staging business. He he's, makes concerts happen. And he says that realistically, they're looking for kind of an October relaunch into business. And um, right now the concert business, as you can imagine, is also equally as impacted as the wedding industry. And for them planning an October start is, is really crazy because it's currently April right now. So April, May, June, July, October. That's not how months go. It's many months away and it makes me feel a little bit nervous. As a wedding photographer with a lot of weddings, what I see happening already, I've already had, I think 18 weddings move. I'll do the math and I'll make that maybe the title. I feel like that's an important thing to, to understand that everyone in the wedding photography industry, regardless of where you're at in your career, is being very impacted by this situation. What is happening specifically to me and the way that somebody that might not have as many weddings, I have, I think I had 50 weddings-ish booked for this year and realistically over half of them uh, are probably going to move into 2021 and then some of them are probably going to move later into 2020 and some of them might even just decide to elope and have an entirely different wedding from what they ever planned on doing and basically here's the situation all of my weddings or a significant number of my weddings are now postponing to 2021 i already had a lot of 2021 dates booked which means a lot of them are selecting dates based on venue availability that i'm not currently available for which means they're they have to go to other photographers and we have a small group set up and we're kind of trying to work with our couples and make it as best as we possibly can on them. We're transferring their deposits and we're trying to do the right thing. If you're in the business right now and you are not letting people transfer and you're keeping their deposits, you're gonna have a hard time moving forward in the future when word gets out about how rough you were during this situation. So I think it's important to be nice to people and understand that they're quite impacted by the fact that they had to restructure and replan their entire wedding day into a month or a year that they had not planned on or anticipated. And it is crazy stressful. This is the biggest event that probably all of your couples have ever actually planned and for it to just all go awry this year. For us, it's like 
kind of a big deal because it's our business, but for them, it's the thing that they've been looking forward to and the thing that they've been, they've been putting all their money and resources and time into, and now it's just not going to happen as they wanted. So, so be nice to people overall. But because of all these dates moving, it means that there's going to be more weddings happening in 2021 than there have ever been happening in any other calendar wedding year, with the exception of maybe the date of 08, 08, 08, or 07, 07, 07. Those days were absolutely wild, but moving into 2021, there is essentially going to be double the volume of weddings that would normally happen in a year happening. And what this means for you, if you're just getting into the industry, is that there are so many opportunities because every other photographer in your city is gonna be booked. So maybe those opportunities aren't going to be rolling in right this minute, but by January of next year, people are gonna be pretty desperate to find a photographer. And if they find you and you're available and you take good photos, they're going to be very happy to hire you. So I think this year it is critically important, one, to really just make your web presence as great as it can possibly be, two, to really just create a web presence, and that means all of your social media and every point of contact that anyone could ever come in contact with, to really attract your ideal couples and your ideal clients so that when people find you, that they know that you're the photographer, that they're not gonna be interviewing 20 other people, or they're not gonna email you and they're gonna ghost out because they were just looking for pricing, that they're gonna know you're the photographer, and when you are available, they're going to be over the moon excited. And now the second part of the, of the good news is that every other photographer is going to to run out of people to refer to. So if you are in their friend circle, if you are able to say, hey, still got availability, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to start referring work to you and fill up your schedule. So if you are a wedding photographer and you're just like, or you just got laid off and you're upset, you don't want, ever wanna work for anyone ever again, uh, this is going to be your year and it might be a bit of kind of a time delay to actually making money and to making it full time. Uh, it is a challenging time and there's going to be a lot of uh, things that we can all learn together going forward. So subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed because I'll be talking about at least all of my take on everything. Moving forward though, there is going to be a massive volume of weddings happening in 2021. And what that means is that there's going to be even more competition in 2022. So you gotta knock 2021 out of the ballpark as far as just creating your own marketing materials and creating all the video content that you want and creating all the social content that you want to really kind of amplify what you do in that time to be the photographer, the, the number one photographer in your local area moving into 2022 uh, when everything's gonna become increasingly more oversaturated and really, really difficult to actually be successful in. So if you're looking at 2021 as, as your first year being full-time, I think that you are in the correct mindset right now. If you're looking at maybe 2020 as your first year full-time, it's gonna be it's gonna be a rough year, not gonna, not gonna lie to you. It's gonna be a rough year for all of us, myself, Lindsay, my wife, uh, all of our friends that are in the wedding industry. It's, it's really something that we've never experienced before and we've never had to deal with before. So uh, know that you're not alone in this if you are an established professional. Uh, if you are an established professional, know that there's gonna be a lot of people coming up on you in 2021 when there's just so many weddings happening. So be aware of that, be, be ahead of that, and really know that you're gonna have to make 2021 your best year ever in order to be successful and to continue to be successful in 2022. So 2021, golden opportunity, 2020, building your portfolio as soon as it's safe to do so. Get out there, build your own dream portfolio. Don't wait for it to just come to you. If you're trying to get second shooting jobs, um, that's gonna be a slow and annoying process to do. But if you're just gonna go out there and you're just gonna build your own dream portfolio and you're gonna start doing work for free for the clients that you wanna be working for, and that means finding your friends as couples. Uh, I feel like most of our ideal clients should probably be our friends. I find it the easiest to just market specifically to, to myself as an individual. Um, I don't really know how to market to somebody that makes like $8 million a year somewhere out in California, but I do know how to market to somebody that is exactly like me. So market to your own best friends and to market to yourself, write copy that connects with you and connects with your significant other. And you will be on the correct road or in the parking lot like we are today. Thanks for joining me in the car today. I'm going to uh, head home now. Had some things that I had to pick up around town and uh, going from the car quarantine back to the home quarantine. And that's all for today. If you uh, have not heard yet, I've announced it a hundred million times by now and you're probably sick of hearing about it, but April 11th is the last day that you can actually get all of my courses, all of my wedding photography courses, Book More Weddings 2020, Introvert's Guide to Posing, my pricing documents, my contract, everything, everything that I've ever made on the internet, it's in front of you right now 
is available for only $30. So if you sign up for Patreon for one month, you can cancel after that month or I guess within that month to never be charged again if you want. Uh, I hope that you stick around though because there's going to be so much to come over 2020 because this is a wild year and really just kind of figuring it all out now and trying to process everything in a way that makes sense for anyone that's in the mindset of growing their business or just upset that they got fired or laid off because of the situation and you never want to be at the mercy of someone else again. So if you're interested in making wedding photography your full-time job, specifically in 2021, there is a ton of content over there, hundreds of hours of stuff probably. Um, I haven't really counted, but I'm going to ballpark that it's probably, I should do that. I, I'm going to say it's like 400, 500 hours of content, maybe more. I don't know. It's a lot. You don't have to go through it all. You can search for what you're actually interested in learning. But I would recommend that you start with Book More Weddings 2020 because it is um, it is a guide, an overarching guide to absolutely everything. And I think when it kind of comes down to it, even though we're in a little bit of a pause right now in 2020, that even if you market hard, you're probably not going to be booking a lot. If you have all of the tools ready to go in the summer or maybe September when things really kind of start to turn around a little bit, you really will make 2021 the best year of your life. And the, the cool thing with wedding photography is that the time that you invest now and the money that you invest now in, in growing uh, your business over time, it actually pays off for the rest of your life rather than if you work really hard for somebody else right now and, and they make a bunch more money like if you're working an office job and you hit your sales quota and your boss makes an extra 100k next year you're not going to see a whole lot of that but if you put the time in right now you can quite easily make a hundred thousand dollars in wedding photography next year and i know that might sound a little crazy but it really is a thing and so many people on patreon have taken their businesses really from absolute zero to uh six figures pretty quickly like within one to um like three years is kind of the the ballpark that i'm usually seeing but if you put everything in play and you really kind of focus and stay in your lane you really can get a lot done in a couple of years or even just one year if you're just actively in control of everything you're doing so thanks for watching today don't forget to subscribe and i will see you again on another time on this channel again my tripod is my steering wheel, so I can't really drive. But uh, thanks for watching. We're not gonna go to Arby's, I promise. I promise, no Arby's. We went camping one time and I brought Nick Arby's and he wasn't happy with that. I brought Arby's. Nick, do you want some Arby's?